Hey guys, it's Tracy from Nova Scotia Living, and uh, today we're going to can up that big batch of beans that we picked the other day. There's the laundry basket that I filled up. Here's some of the beans. The other beans are still over here in the stock pot. I'll get to those ones today too. I just wanted to show you quickly my setup. This is that new pressure canner I did an unboxing for. I'll link that down in the description box if you didn't see it. I haven't used this yet, so it's going to be a trial run. This is my old reliable. I love it. It's worked for years. It's like 25 years old and it still works perfect. So I put the recommended amount of water for my pressure canners. You should do the same for yours. Make sure you read your instructions um, on that because every pressure canner is different. Uh, so over here, I'll just show you. Here's the two lids. You can see how much this has been used. I have to get a real hard, you know, steel wool to get that off, but it's clean, guys. It's clean. Here's some of the beans. Here's my jars. They've been washed. Uh, since you're pressure canning, um, you don't have to sterilize these jars. They're good and clean, don't get me wrong, but it gets so hot in a pressure canner, um, it'll sterilize it for you. Now, if we were water bath canning, you have to sterilize it for sure. So, these are, uh, they're still kind of warm. I, I washed them and I put them in the oven at 215 for about 15 minutes. They're still warm, but they're not hot, hot. Um, here's my scoop, my metal picker-upper, my claw grabber, lids, rings, and funnel. Make sure you check all of your jars before you start canning. Check the rims. Uh, make sure there's no cracks in the jars, nothing stuck in them, anything like that. So I just need to get myself um, a bowl of vinegar and a clean cloth, and we'll be ready to rock. All right, guys, I got my pressure canners just uh, simmering over there. They're not boiling or anything like that. And I'm going to use my hands. This is this scoop comes in a lot real handy when you're using, like if you're making jelly or something with, you know, pickles with a lot of syrup or whatever. But I'm just going to use my hands. And I find with beans, I'll do one closer to you after. Um, you just put it in, um, and there's still a lot of space for more beans, if you can see that. What I do, just gently tap it a few times, and if you see that, it goes down a little bit more, and you can always fit some more in. I don't want to jam pack these, these uh, jars, like if I was doing sauerkraut or something like that, but if you don't try to get some of that space used up, you're just going to have a big chunk of uh, liquid in there, which I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, but you know, you might as well can as much as you possibly can. So there you go. There's one. I will uh, fill up the rest of these and then we'll move on to the next step. This is so easy, guys. It's, it's really easy. The hardest work about canning this is picking the darn beans and snapping them. But Luckily, yesterday, uh, I had lots of helpers. That one's a little too much right now. Now, of course, you don't want to jam these bean, uh, jars hard because you don't want to crack them or anything. But I find that helps. That looks good. Uh, yeah, I had lots of helpers. My kids and we had some cousins over. And they helped quite a bit snapping these beans. They'd come and snap some and then go play and come back and snap a little bit more. And before you know it, we were done it. I might need some more jars, guys. I, I really can't tell. But I got oodles down in the basement and I can easily whip those up. It's only 20 after 11 in the morning. I only got two babies home with me today. They're out there playing. Uh, two of my girls went to day camp today. They go all this week. Um, and little Miss Misha went down to see her Grammy. So it makes a nice special little day for her. Because next year she'll be old enough to go to these day camps. But this year she's just under the line. Anyways, I'll quit jibber jabbering. And I'll finish these jars up. Okay, I got all those 
those jars filled up. Now what I'm going to do, oh, where's my bowl of vinegar? Oh, yeah, it's this one. Um, this is just plain white vinegar. You can use just hot water, but I'm just using vinegar because that's what my mom always used. But you can use just hot water, too. So what we're going to do is uh, start filling these jars up from about an inch from the top. So I'm filling this up. It's usually like the very bottom lip of where the ring goes on. Oh, I need a wooden spoon because you always, always, always have to debubble your jars. I'll do a close-up jar next because I see them the farthest away. Uh, use something wooden or plastic. Try not to use something metal because it could scratch your jar. But you just wiggle it, poke it a little bit to get any air bubbles, as many as you can out. Um, yeah, there. So this is a clean dishcloth, and I just wrap it around my finger, and, ooh, it's hot. That water in that tea kettle was hot. It was boiling before I started adding the beans, but it's still hot. And I just go around a couple times, and then I put the lids in here, and I poured some of that hot boiling water in with these lids. So, and the reason for that, it helps loosen this little red rubber ring a little bit. You can't, like, if I was to touch it, I can't really tell, but it, it just loosens it up a little bit and helps the, um, helps it seal to the jar, so. And you only do this fingertip tight, guys. Whew. You don't, you don't do, you know, He-Man on it or anything like that. And then we bring it over to the pressure canner. So I'll zoom you guys in, and I'll do another one so you can see a little bit better. Okay, I zoomed you way in. So yeah, I'm right here. I'll just see which jar of this one. Let me, let me move some of this stuff out of the way so you can see. I'll do this one here. So you can see, it's just a jar of beans. We'll add some water to it. I don't know if you can see that steam, but it's, it's still really hot. And you fill it up right to like the bottom rim. And debubble. I'm just using the end of a wooden spoon. There we go. And then of course we wipe the rim. And then the lid, and then the ring. Now when you're pressure canning, you're not supposed to reuse the lids. You're not supposed to reuse the, this part. You can reuse the rings, but apparently, I have reused them sometimes and they, they seem to work okay, but in the books they always say you should use new ones. So use your discretion, do your own research, etc, etc. So there it is off to the pressure canner. I'll get the pressure canner loaded up and then we'll be back. I just wanted to show you, I filled up the bottom rack and these are pint jars. For those that don't know, they're pint sized jars. And I forgot to mention, you can put a teaspoon of kosher salt in these beans and can them. I've done that before and they turn out fine. It's just I prefer to add salt to my food as I'm cooking. But it's just used for seasoning, that's it. So, but make sure it's not regular table salt. It can't be any kind of iodized salt. Kosher salt or pickling salt will do. All right, let me finish this up. And I still have a little more than half of a, well, yeah, three quarters of a 22 quart stock pot. So I still, yeah, I'll be getting more jars from the basement for sure. Okay, so I put the lock on, or the lid on. It locks on the sides here, very tight. Uh, I don't really know what that's for. I I don't know. I should look that up. <laughs> My other one has it too, but it doesn't do anything. It's just a pretty little button. This this red button will poke up when it comes up to pressure. And this is the vent hole. So I'm turning the burner on high. And when this starts venting a steady stream of steam, say that five times fast, um, 
I'm gonna put the timer on for 10 minutes. I'll bring you back so you can see what that actually looks like. All right, guys, so 10 minutes this off. You see how fast that's coming out now? It did that for 10 minutes. It started doing that as soon as I shut the camera off a second, uh, 10 minutes ago. So you let it do its thing for 10 minutes. The back, burn, back tanner's starting to come off the steam. And uh, now I'm going to put my 10 pound weight on. Uh, pressure canner comes with three weights, 5 pound, 15 pound, and 10, 5, 10, 15 pound. Jesus, Tracy. Anyways, I use a 10 pound weight. So this is extremely hot, so you got to be very... All right, let's try this again. I got my oven mid on this time. Okay, I just, my, I ran out of memory, so I don't know if you caught that, but I put my 10 pound weight on, and the burner's still on high. So, um... Yeah, I had to use my oven mitt. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Just the steam that comes out is, you know, it'll scold you for sure. So we got to let this uh, start jiggling. And I'll bring you back when that happens. But notice how this little red uh, poker is up now. Can you see that? It's up now. It means <coughs> you don't want to touch this pot. You don't want to move this pot. It's full of pressure. So I'll bring you back. All right, it's starting to do its dance. See how it's jiggling around? Now we're going to turn the heat down between medium and high, closer to medium. I'd say between a six and a seven. And you want it to make this dance jiggle about two or three times a minute, something like that. It's just you don't want it doing it all the time and you don't want it to not do it. So you got to stick close to when you're pressure canning. You don't have to be right on top of the stove, but I certainly don't go outside or go upstairs and take a nap or anything like that. Stay close and pay attention. Um, you can see that back pressure canner is coming up to start to steam. I'll soon set that timer for 10 minutes. But I'll bring it back. So um, what I have to do now is I'm going to set the timer for 20 minutes. Since these are pint jars, um, you can them for 20 minutes and uh, easy peasy. That's it. Then you got to let it cool down. This is what I have left. I have seven more pint jars to put in and one little half pint. Um, I just didn't have enough for another pint size, so we'll just have a baby jar. But that's all good. So, yeah, when that 20 minutes is up, I'll show you what we do next. All right, guys, I was on the phone and on the phone and on the phone. It seemed like every time I put it down, I had to pick it up again when the buzzer went off. So after the 20 minutes, all you do is shut the burner off. You don't touch the pot. You don't take the weight off. You don't try to cool it down uh, like by, by putting the pot in the sink or anything like that. This is all part of the canning process. So just shut the burner off and let it cool down. You see how this poker is still poked up? You don't dare open this lid until that poker is down because there's still pressure in this canner. Um, when that's down, what I do first is take the weight off and if there's no steam coming out of it, it means that it's okay to take it out or to take the lid off. And when you do, I'll show you how I do it, but make sure that it's away from you. Uh, and this one I just shut off, so this will take a little longer. It takes at least, at least a half hour before the pressure comes out of these canners, really. You should really just take your time. You can leave it overnight if you want to. You know what I mean? All the better. It's all fine. But don't open these lids until it's safe, for sure. All right, guys. Um, they've cooled down enough, and I'm about to take the lid off of them. I let them both cool down so I can just empty them both at the same time. I have you zoomed in. I'm way over beside the, the porch door. But I'm going to open the lid and you guys hopefully you can hear me. This is another test for my camera. Um, because the dishwasher is going and right now I'm raising my voice but I just want to see how it turns out. So the way of testing is taking the weight off. There's no steam coming out of here. I can hold my hand here without burning myself. It's not, not feeling anything. So for mine, I need to twist it so it unlocks. And I don't know if the camera will pick up, but you'll see some of the steam, you know, come up. So I always lift the lid away from me. And watch my toes because the Oh, it smells good. It smells like cooked beans. If you like cooked beans, and I do because I make them for my family. So, they all look good here. 
these jars are so hot. Let me turn the kitchen light on. I don't know how well you're seeing me, but I'll turn the kitchen kitchen light on, whether that helps or not. I have a, um, a bat, clean bath towel on the table, and I'm going to start. Again, I'm going to wash my toes. I'll bring it up close to you. I forgot to lift my viewer screen up so I can see what I'm shooting. Hopefully you can see what the heck I'm trying to show. It's still bubbling. Uh, I'll put them on the table and you'll be, I'll bring you down after to look at them. So, all right, let's empty these canners. I love that sound. Anyways, these were the first two pressure canners. I still, like I say, have those um, oh, two, four, six, eight, nine little jars over there. I'm gonna do up, and I'll bring you back at the very end when it's all done, set, said and told, done, and said, whatever. You know what the heck I'm talking about. I just want to say I put it on a bath towel, just because these jars are still hot. Oh, do you see that bubbling? These are still piping hot, honestly. And when I lift it out of the jar, or out of the canner, um, I don't grab it by the lids. I grab it by that bottom lip of the jar. So it's not gonna, not gonna lift anything up. Anyways, these are still piping hot. I'll make sure I shut that gate to the kitchen over there because I got two babies running around. I thought I'd had to go get my big boy for two o'clock, but he's working a double. So I'm gonna put those other jars in the canner and, uh, We'll do that up, just in time for me to make supper. Boy, I, I don't want to be all, uh, uh, I don't know, sexist or what, but I, I always heard when I was little, I'm a woman's work is never done, a man can work from sun to sun. But in reality, a man and a woman work super hard all the time, I know that. It's just that's what pops into my head when I'm doing this thing, and don't get a sit down break at all. So let's get these beans finished up and uh, yeah, we'll feel accomplished for sure. Can you believe I'm all done my can and beans? I'll take a picture of it after I bring you guys out, but it's time to go get the girls from day camp and both babies are stinking sleeping. And the other time I would let their butt sleep. Oh, but I'm going to have to wake them up. Look at Mr. Mace, all slouched over. <laughs> Him and his overalls, silly boy. All right, guys. So here's all the jars. Only one of them didn't seal. Oh, wasn't that one? What one is it? That one. So we'll be having that with our supper tonight. But the rest are all ready to go. So I'm just going to take these rings off. I don't keep the rings on them. There's no need to. Yeah, make sure. Wooden sealed. I just give the jar a nice little wipe and I'll put uh, July 17 because I canned these yesterday. I'll put them in the box and, boxes and put them down in the cellar. And I just need probably two, three, maybe four more laundry baskets full of beans from the garden. And my beans will be ready for the whole winter season. So thanks for joining me with my whole bean experience. And uh, peace, love, and happiness, or should I say, peace, love, and green beans. All right, guys, please like, share, and subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.